Hey, it's Benja. I hope you're doing well. Today I want to talk you through my process of creating those two cannons using Blender and Substance Painter. They are here rendered in Unity. If you follow my channel and maybe have seen my last video, I'm working on my own game with a stylized style of art and uh, this is the result of two assets I created last week. I created them while being sick, so I was pretty inefficient and slow, which means that the video is really sped up, so please feel free to slow it down and even mute my voice and put on your favorite soundtrack. Like the last video I did about creating some crates, this is not a proper tutorial, but more of a commentary on what I'm doing, my workflow and a few tips along the way. As always, I start by gathering references. I like to use Pure Ref for this. It's a free um, application. I guess you've already heard of it probably, but check it out. It's really easy to use and really practical. I avoid to take uh, 3D references and even concept art because I don't want to copy the art of, the, of another game. So I try as much as possible to find real life photos or even videos which are really practical for 3D as you can see um, different angles of the same object. So as you can see here, I'm concepting uh, by modeling my Canon and I'm using a few different shapes. I try to keep the shapes separated as long as I can because it makes them easier to adjust and modify uh, on the go. As you can see, I like to use the mirror modifier because it allows me to have a clear representation of my 3D object without having to shape everything. So you only shape one side and the other side is created automatically. Um, it's really powerful for the UVing and texturing too because you only have to UV one side of the object. Um, general tip I would give for creating stylized art is try to bend the shapes, distort them so they feel less boring. Um, it gives this cartoony look, but that's what I'm aiming for. So as you could see just before, I was uh, bending the sides of the cannon and even the cannon hit itself is like wider at the tip and thinner in the middle. So yeah, I really like and try to exaggerate those shapes because it aims for a nicer silhouette to look at and more interesting objects. In the end, I will sometimes come back a little and straighten the shapes. But to me, this is part of the fun and the game of creating those assets. For the brushes, I already talked about it last time, but I'm mainly using the default brushes, uh, including one from Orb that you can download for free all over the internet, I guess, because it is really well known. Um, you can see me here try to mask some parts and create some shapes with it, but I, I wasn't happy with it, so I ended up erasing it. As you might have seen from the beginning of this video, I'm doing a lot of back and forth trying stuff out. This is mainly because I don't have a concept in, in the first place, but I, I try to do this and always resync my shapes. You can see me work on a small cap on top of the cannon here, and I ended up not using it because it felt like uh, too detailed. I always try to have the same amount of detail all over the asset and between the different assets of my game too. If you are working on a game or maybe a diorama with multiple assets, I would recommend importing the assets you already created to have a reference and put them side by side to see if they work together and would fit in the same game or same world. Before I talk a little bit more about this because I feel it is really important, um, I just wanted to comment what I'm doing here. As you can see, I have used face masks to hide part of the wheels uh, because a part will be made of metal and another part would be made of wood. So yeah, back to the importance of the level of details between uh, different assets in the same scene. 
When you create a piece of art, whether it's 2D or 3D, you want to think about uh, the viewer attention or the focus point of your piece. In 2D, you will hear a lot of people talk about composition and lightning. In 3D, lightning is really true, but composition might differ a bit because the player can move around the scene and view it from different angles, modifying the composition. The level of detail is a great way to um, make the player focus on certain elements. For this reason, you might have noticed that in many games, the characters are way more detailed than the world around them, because the character is most of the time the main focus of the game. It's in the foreground, it's way closer to the camera, and you will see it like probably most of the time during your playtime. For this same reason, I try to keep all of my assets of the same kind, for example these cannons that will go along barrels and crates, to have the same level of details, so none of them keep more of the attention from the player, so they don't feel more important. If I want a specific crate or cannon to be more important in a game, I can use particle effects, for example, or a ray of light coming directly to this particular object, or create another instance of it that is more detailed or use more saturated colors. So I have different ways of doing it, but I don't want a particular object to feel more important if it is not um, control and if it is not my intention. So back to the video, as you can see, I just finished sculpting the pieces. I spread them apart, so when I'm baking the maps, they won't bake into one another. If you have seen my last video about the crates, I will go to, through the same process mainly, um, which is I sculpted the wood, but I will mainly paint the metal because I feel more comfortable that way. And as you can see, I'm working on a gradient. I will uh, make its opacity really low, so it will stay subtle, but I feel like adding gradients is a great way to add variations to your assets. Like I did for the crates last time, you can see that I'm working on two separate folders with black masks, uh, one for the metal, the other one for the wood. I mainly use the polygon selection tool to create those masks. Only for the wheels, I had to paint uh, the separation between wood and metal. And for the metal, as you can see, I'm using the same process as I did last time, meaning I create some random marks uh, using the blur slope on them, and then hand painting the, some parts of those marks that I feel like they look nice. It's a fun way to work with what I call happy accidents. So creating random marks will create at some point, somewhere at least, some shapes that I like and I will just reproduce those ones and then erase the rest. Uh, for the wood, I'm working the same way. I did a gradient and I'm working with maps and generators for the shadows and cavities. And I want to talk a bit again about coherence between my different assets that will be side by side in my world. I could, in Substance Painter, save my material I just created and uh, copy paste it onto different assets, but I don't want them to look too close to one another and I know the process I used to create the other ones, so I'm recreating the process from the ground up, so it takes a bit more time than if I just copy paste my material or save it as a smart material and import it onto my new object. But this way I make sure that they will still look a bit different from one another and you don't feel like it's the same texture uh, copy pasted onto each object of the scene. So I'm using Photoshop afterwards to put all of these textures on a single texture file and I will maybe color correct it if I feel like, like for example, the wood colors are too different from one another. Even if I work with a lot of generators and maps in Substance Painter, I always end up with hand-painted layers on top of them all 
because I really want that style to show up in the game and I want to be able to see the brush strokes. I feel like without it, the materials read a bit less well and they feel a bit boring too. I finished up texturing with the ropes. I didn't work as much on the rope as I did on the metal and the wood because they will be uh, smaller and definitely less visible. They will retain less attention, so I don't want to spend too much time on them. And the maps basically did the job for me here. And if you wonder how they were made, well, as I said, I was sick and I, it was kind of hard for me to think about anything, actually, so I forgot to record it. But they were created using a simple shape, an array modifier and the curve modifier. If you want a tutorial about this, I will gladly do one, but I know there are a few good ones over on the internet. And if you've watched my last video, you know I import all the assets I created into a scene to see how they fit together. This is in Unity, but this is not a scene of the game, it's just to show off my asset and make sure they work together. So yeah, feel free to ask if you have any question, and until next time, take care!